And we welcome you, those on ESPN2, to Charleston, South Carolina, the third quarterfinal of the day of the Gildan Charleston Classic with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. This is Ohio versus Clemson. And a couple of early buckets by the freshman point guard for the Bobcats, Tavion Kirk, has Ohio with the early lead. Ohio taking advantage of Clemson with two early turnovers. And Clemson has had slow starts in their two victories so far. And Ohio really coming out as the aggressor early in this game. Now we talked off the top about how Clemson through its first two games of the season has gotten the ball up and down, scored a lot of points. Ohio's defense going to try and mitigate that. As Brad Brownell, the eighth-year head coach of the Clemson Tigers, took Clemson to the NCAA tournament way back in his first year and haven't been back since but uh, my partner is Thomas gets great position inside you think this Clemson team has a legitimate shot to go dancing this year and one of the major reasons you just saw Eli Thomas in the post is one of the better post presences in the ACC and more importantly they have three guys that can go get him a bucket in the paint blocks pass deflected out of bounds off the hands of Marquise Reed so Ohio will keep it Kevin Mickle comes in for the first time for Ohio. He's a graduate transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. And for so long, Clemson fans have wondered why they couldn't get a post presence on the inside, especially with the, the number of guys that they've had in the past. When you think about a Horace Grant and you think about Eldon Campbell and what they have, well, they have it this year at Eli Thomas. I'm not saying that he's one of those guys, but he is a quality post performer. And then when you come off the bench with Mark Donnell, the graduate transfer from Michigan and Amir Sims, the freshman, you have a number of options in the post to go along with some lethal wings that this Clemson lineup has on offense. Well, per minute, Thomas can get things done. You know, in their game Sunday against North Carolina A&T, Eli Thomas, 13 points, 9 rebounds in only 17 minutes. And the key for him will be staying out of foul trouble, and it's important for him to stay on the court, which was a struggle for him last year as he transferred in. With the left hand, he left it short that time. Here goes Block, kind of the jack-of-all-trades for Ohio. And he throws it into the backcourt. Was it deflected? No, it wasn't, so it's another Bobcats turnover. And that's an area where they've struggled this year. And Saul Phillips, of course, is, is a guy that values the basketball each possession down the floor. And one of the things that he said was important for his team here, especially having a freshman point guard, is to make sure they handle the basketball when they're playing against these teams that they often could be undersized against. They have to get quality shots on every possession down the floor. Yeah, Coach Phillips thought that uh, he would have a senior All-Mac point guard back this year, Jerron Simmons. But uh, late in the process, Jerron decided to take his graduate transfer year at the University of Michigan. And so you've got two freshmen trying to fill that void here this season for Ohio. Little lefty jumper is good by Shelton Mitchell, the redshirt junior from Waxhaw, North Carolina, on the board. Now you talked about the jumper. You forgot to mention the, the left to right crossover to get to the jumper, creating space. Beautiful move by Shelton Mitchell at the top of the key. Nice stuff out of Oak Hill Academy. Hey, hey, you're glad you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> here is Mickle. Has his pocket picked. Tigers on the run with numbers. Grantham knifes into the bucket. Count the basket in one. No, they are going to say it's an offensive foul on Grantham. So it's a personal foul against Grantham. We'll take a break with 15.52 remaining first half. Was given a long contract extension, so he is signed for a number of years. And for Corey Alexander and Doug Sherman, that's an opportunity to see him try and get a championship here in Charleston. But what does it mean for the Clemson program to have him locked up? Well, I believe it's a great thing for Clemson. I'm a believer in Brad Brownell as a head coach. I believe he's a, a strong head coach. I believe you would get the same type of response from him amongst the ACC coaches. You know, the, the expectations in Clemson could be a little bit difficult at times, but I believe that this is a NCAA tournament team, and you see what he's been able to do throughout his career. He knows how to get there. I think this team has a chance to be able to do it. And despite rumors of his firing and all sorts of things flying around Clemson, he was re-signed to a six-year contract extension through the year 2021. Six years. Doesn't that seem like it's a little bit long for somebody 
who has had the run that they have had not getting to the NCAA tournament? I believe that is a great job by the athletic department recognizing what they have in a coach when you talk about what he has has had to endure you remember this clemson team had to play away from home two years ago and won 10 acc games had a little bit of a step backwards last year but again the talent that he has with this team especially with the young freshmen coming in and being able to play i believe that this team has a chance to be special Mickle commits his second turnover since coming into the game for Ohio and making him pay is Shelton Mitchell. And all of the Clemson points are off of turnovers right now for Ohio. Ohio struggling with the basketball, I believe now five turnovers early in this game. And every time Clemson has capitalized on those turnovers. Mike Laster again drives the baseline and this time finishes. Much better decision to retie the game at eight apiece. The senior out of Cass Technical in Detroit. We mentioned those freshmen, one of them getting involved in the action now. A.J. Oliver from Clemson, South Carolina, getting his first action here in the Charleston Classic. Good post up by Grantham. And that's something that you see from, from Dante Grantham that you did not see from him in the past. He's moved to the four position that was occupied by Jerome Blossom game over the past few years, and that gives him an opportunity to play more in the post and not just be a three-point shooter. Well, the preseason poll in the ACC did not have Clemson anywhere near the top. In fact, they were all the way down at number 13, as you see at the bottom of the screen. Duke, Carolina, Notre Dame, Miami. But you think Clemson's going to do not just better than 13, but much better. For the record, I didn't vote in this poll, just so you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I do agree. I think when you look at Virginia Tech, Florida State, and Virginia right there in that 6, 7, 8 mix, I think Clemson can actually finish right in there in the mix with that group in the top echelon of the ACC. And I think one of the big question marks out of that page right there is Louisville. You know, you, you, they've got the coaching change course. They lost one of their key recruits. How will Louisville do? Are they the fifth best team in the ACC? I honestly believe they're better than the fifth best team in the ACC. You to give them a couple losses in the ACC play, especially considering they don't have Rick Pitino on the sideline, but the talent in Louisville is still there, and these guys are going to be on a mission this year to prove that they are in it for the right reasons, and they want to have a special year. Clemson here with the basketball, sporting their new orange uniforms with a purple trim. Jump hook way off the mark by Amir Sims. Mark Donnell has also come into the game, the former Michigan Wolverine. This time, Mickle puts it up and in. And Kevin Mickle was part of two NCAA tournament teams at Florida Gulf Coast and played a major role. So he's a guy that's coming off the bench for Ohio that can really give them a spark and more so a veteran presence amongst a team that really isn't returning a lot of experience. Donnell for three. Speaking of experience, this is a young man, Donnell, who's actually played in five NCAA tournament games himself. And he gives Clemson, we talked about the fact that he can give them a post presence, but you can see he also has that stretch four mentality where he can step out and knock down a three. He's a guy uh, in Ann Arbor who really lost his job last year to Mo Wagner, and uh, there really wasn't a place for him on the Wolverines roster this year, so he had to go look elsewhere and found a terrific landing spot here at Clemson. Well, I'm sure that you would ask Brad Brown. No, he's pretty happy about that. No doubt. <laughs> Well, that's the college basketball world that we live in, and some coaches embrace it more than others, and you're going to lose players, you're going to gain players, and you just want to be on the right side of that equation. Well, with Saul Phillips scheduled the trip to come here to Charleston, <laughs> there were two guys on his team that he thought he would have here this year that he doesn't have. One of those we talked about transfer graduate transfer to the University of Michigan and then Jason Carter his probably his best player on this team out with a lower leg injury so you know they're a little bit shorthanded here for the Ohio Bobcats but yet coming out competing early in this game yeah Jason Carter suffered a foot injury in the exhibition game for Ohio and so he's not expected to play at all this week here in Charleston Kirk bounce pass taken away third time Clemson's had a pass in tight in traffic that didn't get through and another turnover for Ohio Clemson has done a great job at taking advantage of these extra opportunities they've gotten off of Bobcats turnovers we'll see if they're able to do so in this possession yeah Corey that's seven turnovers already for Ohio James Cullen just into the game grabs the rebound for Ohio Laster on the pull-up. 
He's attacked from the right. Now he attacks from the left. But what you get to see is Laster, who has a little bit of experience for Ohio, coming in and, you know, making the right plays. You know, we talked about the turnovers, but Laster has attacked the basket, one fourth layup, and now with the pull-up jump shot. And you know the guys who have been in this situation before, and they know how to go about approaching the way to play in these games. Mitchell with a sweet handle gives to Donnell. After the jab step left, able to get to the bucket and draw the foul. We've had five ties. Clemson up a point early. 10.57 remaining in the half. He is not playing, and without him, Ohio has been turning the basketball over at an alarming rate so far, Corey. And eight points off a of turnover by Clemson. The Shelton Mitchell grabbing one, taking it coast to coast. And, it, and when you think about trying to slow down this Clemson offense, you don't want to give them easy opportunities, but that's exactly what they've gotten as you see Mitchell going from one end to the other. The second time he's been able to do that in the game, I think a lot of that would have been stopped. If you have a guy like Jason Carter with his ability, what he's able to do in the post and then offensively for a team like Ohio, I think you may have cut down on some of that because you have someone to run your offense through in the half court. Now, there are those who think that Jason Carter will contend for the Mac Player of the Year award this season. Got to get him back out on the court, though. That's the problem. I mean, it's hard to be able to win those awards when you're not playing. Believe me, I tried it. I was sat in the boot for <laughs> part of my last two years in college, and I didn't win any awards in those years. You missed almost one full season, didn't you? I did miss one full season. I missed a half of the next one, and I got mm. fed up, so I put my name in the NBA draft. <laughs> Well, the Ohio issue at this point with the turnovers also is caused in part, as we talked about, you don't have the stabilizing senior point guard they expected in Jerron Simmons, who's transferred to Michigan. So you've got Tavion Kirk, and you've got coming off the bench these days, Zach Miller. There's another turnover by the Bobcats. And another easy two, this time, Amar Sims. And give Shelton Mitchell credit. We showed the video package of him and he's continuing to pick up steals. And there's another one getting the job done defensively and just picking the pocket. But more importantly, when he gets his hands on the basketball, it's turning into two points at the other end for Clemson. Long three by block. The junior from Lincoln, Illinois, has got his first three points. It's back to a one-point ball game. And block coming up big. For Ohio there block was one rebound shy of a double double in their opener against Alabama A&M and it is it's important for Ohio to have this type of veteran presence and guys that have been here before that know how to perform in games like this especially when they are out man now defending the post Sims goes right up and over the outstretched arm to Gavin block 18-15 Clemson. And we earlier mentioned the, the post presence. You have Amir Sims, the freshman, who can, of course, you see, get you a basket on the block, as well as Donnell and then Eli Thomas. So this is a luxury that Brad Brownell hasn't had in his tenure as the head coach at Clemson. Three different guys that he can get the ball to on the inside that can get you points. We talked about Shelton Mitchell and right there just getting out into the passing lane and then the beautiful feed to Amir Sims on the break. More points off of turnovers for Clemson. Shelton Mitchell takes his seat. The Vanderbilt transfers gotten off to a good start as club. Now in the hands of Marquise Reed in the backcourt along with A.J. Oliver. Three point bucket is good by Grantham. As well as Grantham is shooting the basketball this year, I would be chasing shots if I were him. He's shooting 80% from the field. That's unheard of, especially for a guy that's made four three-pointers already coming into this game. Foul on the three. It's against DeVoe. And so we'll have three free throws upcoming for Jordan Dardis. Jordan Dardis is the young man that Saul Phillips feels as though his team needs to get going. He's a preseason all-conference selection, only six points in their opener, and he's a guy that has to be able to put points on the board for Ohio to be successful. And another one of those veteran players that Saul Phillips has to depend upon, especially when you have a you know, freshman point guard running the show. Now, Dardis led the Mid-American Conference in free throw shooting accuracy a year ago. That is first free throw of this season. He led the MAC as a freshman in three-point shooting 48% dropped off if you can call it that last year to 44 percent and off to a solid start this year 
Those are great numbers when a bad year for you shooting threes is 44%. Still was, I think, 12th best in the country. I'll tell you what. But again, a guy like that, you got to hunt shots. You got to go mm -hmm. find opportunities when you're shooting the ball that well. See, that's why I never would have had a, a field goal percentage like that. <laughs> no way. I would have been just firing if I was shooting 45% from the field. Coach Jones couldn't have stopped you? Hey, he's on the sideline. Nothing he can do about it. He's not guarding. <laughs> The Mac East Division preseason poll, you see uh, Ohio is number three behind Buffalo and Kent State. On the run out, easy two for Laster. Defensive breakdown by Clemson there. The easy bucket on one end, but no one getting back defensively to defend the rim. A great job by Ohio taking advantage of the mismatch. Thomas over the right shoulder, left it short again. And the rebound cleared by Doug Taylor. Yeah, this Ohio team should be in the mix for the Mac East, as we just showed you, but everybody in that league seems to agree that Western Michigan is the team to beat in the Mid-American. We've got an official's timeout as Mitchell heads straight to the Clemson locker room. Looks like he's perhaps getting sick. Either that or he took a shot to the mouth. One of the two. That's one of the things normally when you go over there and you're spitting in the trash can, you're looking for blood. You don't want to speculate, but hopefully nothing that will keep him out of this game. We've already seen how important Shelton Mitchell is to this Clemson team. Nice pass. Grantham, good footwork. Another two for the senior. And it's a luxury to be able to have a guy like Eli Thomas who can make that pass, threading the needle on that one and hitting Dante Grantham right in the scoring pocket. So Grantham has dipped his toes each of the last two years in the NBA world, decided to come back to college. There's that three-point stroke of Jordan Dardis. So you're saying he should shoot more? I'm saying he definitely should shoot a <laughs> lot more. <laughs> you can see it's a beautiful shot for Dardis. And he shot so well throughout his entire career that you want to try to find a way to get a guy like that more shots. Clemson with the basketball and a two-point lead. The Tigers have hit five of their last six shot attempts. Here goes Reed. Slips to Thomas, who throws it down. That's the advantage for Clemson right there at the rim. And Gabe DeVoe with a beautiful steal. Getting out and taking the basketball away again. Turnovers have been a problem for the Ohio Bobcats. And often when you create turnovers, you get easy looks, and none get easier than Eli Thomas finishing at the rim for the Clemson Tigers. Point lead here in the first half at the Gildan Charleston Classic. This is day one of our event, and with the use of replay, we have found what was ailing Shelton Mitchell on this uh, look on the drive. He took a shot to the face and then wound up just basically walking off the court. You see there, he comes away, the head turned right after the impact right there. He immediately goes over to the trash can, and i got to talk to Sheldon about this. You don't spit in the trash can, because if you have a tea or two coming out, you'll never find it. you got to spit in the cup, Sheldon, to make sure you can locate that too, just in case you have to put it back in. Now he's an no-kill guy. Shouldn't he know that already? He should. He should. But, I mean, again, like I said, i got to get to him. we got to have this type of conversation, but he's been great so far here today and more importantly a bigger presence on the defensive end of the floor coming up with turnovers and turning them into points on the other end of the floor for the Tigers. Well Clemson against North Carolina and T forced a total of nine turnovers. They've already done that here tonight against Ohio. I believe we got to give Ohio some credit on that too though. I don't think they've helped themselves in the half court especially. And Tavion Kirk the, the freshman point guard getting back into the game and now you'll see Clemson will try their best to pick up that pressure and again Brad Brown now is you know by nature a defensive coach they lacked off on their defense last year which was part of the reason why they weren't unable to make it to the NCAA tournament after having a very good non-conference season but at the same time you know this is something that he focused on with his team over the offseason to make sure they got back to defending the right way there's that man with that stroke so, so now you agree with me, right? Jordan Dardis got to shoot the ball. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's got nine points to lead all scores. Back to a three-point ball game. 
you ever lose a chiclet on the basketball court? You know, I had one chipped. I had one chipped. And my mom paid a lot of money for my braces. She was not happy about that. I think she went out and bought me a mouth guard right after. Was that at Virginia or in the NBA? No, this was actually in high school. Oh, okay. Well, fresh off their trouncing of Notre Dame, number seven, Miami returns home to Hard Rock Stadium to take on your alma mater, the Virginia Cavaliers, with their sights set on the college football playoffs. Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. I hope that there are no, no Wahoo faithful listening to this. Mm -hmm. But I'm an ACC guy. And Don't I, say it. I want to see Miami in the college football playoff. Wow. So I'm not rooting against Virginia. But I would not be upset if Miami beats Virginia in that game. I would not want to be you the next time you go to Charlottesville. Why not? Wow. <laughs> Why not? If I saw you on the street and I heard you say, I wouldn't mind if they lost, I, w I wouldn't like that. I'm an ACC guy. I root for Clemson football. I root for, for Miami football. My I need goodness. to see our teams in the college football playoff. I still love Virginia. Hey, Virginia's ball eligible. I stay, I stay in touch. I'm glad that they're coming back. They're ball eligible this year for the first time in a very long time. But I would love to see Miami in the college football playoff. All right, now I'm going to go one better than that. So a month ago, I'm at the Carrier Dome on a Friday night when Syracuse takes up Clemson and hands the Tigers their one and loss of the season. Eli Thomas doing work. I like the ACC, too, but I'm rooting for my alma mater. And when Syracuse took out Clemson, nobody was happier than me. What is it with you Syracuse guys, by the way? Why is it that We're every loyal. time I get on TV, We're I'm with loyal. one of you? We're loyal. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We got some basketball to talk about right now. <laughs> Here goes Dardis. He is certainly getting the attention of the Clemson defenders now, and that attention can't stop him there. Saul Phillips told me yesterday that he we have to get him going, and here in the first half, he has gotten going, and that's the reason why this is a one-point game. You would think that Clemson was in command of this game, but Jordan Dardis has shown up big here in the last few minutes to get his team right back in it. Yeah, he's got 11 points to set the pace for the Bobcats, who are back within one. Skip pass to the corner. Grantham spotting up. And it goes up and over the top of the backboard. Back to Ohio. So you tell me Jordan Dardis is more than just a spot-up shooter. I do believe so. And after you've knocked down a couple of threes, you get a lot of attention on the perimeter. So now when you put the basketball on the floor and go to the mid-range, that's what makes you a better player at this level. Preseason second team all Mac averaged nearly 13 per game a year ago. Offensive foul against Tavion Kirk, and that's another turnover. And a great call by John Higgins on the baseline there, seeing that left arm on the push-off. We got three officials named John. So I'm just going to start saying John from here on, but this was John Higgins with the great call right there, the left arm pushing off Marquise Reed as Kirk attacks the basket. Yeah, second personal foul on the freshman from Joliet, Illinois. They are officiating crew, John Higgins, John Gaffney, John Hampton. Under five minutes to go. First half in our third quarter final at the Gildan Charleston Classic. Reed thought about it. Now puts it on the floor. Got around the defender, didn't finish, but Thomas continues to play big in the paint. And give Eli Thomas credit for pursuing that basketball, more importantly for staying on the court here in the first half for Clemson, not getting himself in foul trouble, and being a post presence that Brad Brownell can rely on out on the court. And we talked about Clemson's slow starts, what they've had. They've had opportunities to break this game open, but give the Ohio Bobcats credit. They have hung around and now gotten Dardis going a bit and made this a game here in the first half. Thomas, 6'9", 237, a junior from Dallas, out of Lancaster High School. And you mentioned the 237. I asked him before the game how much weight he lost over the summer. And, you know, when you know you put the work in, you know exactly 17 pounds. Mm -hmm. Not 20, mm -hmm. 17. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how you know he's proud of what he was able to do over the summer. And last year we talked about he was a, a piece that could come in off the bench and help Clemson. But he knew that he had to be more of a focal point for them this year, especially on the offensive end of the floor, and did the job over the summer getting his body right to take on that load. Here's Zach Butler, the other freshman point guard. And actually, Butler was the one recruited as she thought was going to be the only freshman point guard in this class until they had the transfer. Grantham buries the three. See, my theory about these guys who are making shots at such a high clip is really coming into play tonight. Grantham's <laughs> coming in the game shooting 80%, needs to get more shots. Shoot the ball. Dardis, who's a career 40-plus percent shooter from three-point line, needs to get more shots. 
Block picked up the dribble as defender fell down. So he took the shot, but Thomas clears the glass. So who out of the five guys in uh, orange right now do you want to shoot on this possession? Well, I would like to get the ball in the hands of Eli Thomas and really allow him to make plays out of the post, whether it's for himself like he just did here or the passes out to Grantham, Reed, and Scott Spencer in the game. Now all these guys are able to shoot the ball from the perimeter. So when you can have a post presence like Thomas to play around, it makes offense a lot easier. And that, now I speak so well about Eli. He has a horrible flop right there. That could be on <laughs> SC, not top 10. John Brickley, Dallin Cuff, Tom Crean with you in the studio. Coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report, we'll dive deeper into the UCLA situation. Meanwhile, Coach Clemson's offense finding its rhythm late in this first half. They're really playing well. Dante, Dante Grantham's doing an excellent job. They were 4-12 and 12 in games that were decided by six points or less last year. So overcoming that is going to be a huge step for that team this year, and they're on their way right now. Ohio's also, they're shooting, they're keeping themselves in this game, 65%. They've turned it over nine times, though. Corey Alexander seems like he's loving Miami Hurricanes <laughs> lately. He's going to give out a turnover chain down there, I think. We'll see you guys at the half. All right, thank you, guys. Back here in Charleston, where uh, we are not the only early season tournament being held in the state of South Carolina this season, the Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach has been moved from San Juan to the States, of course, because of the devastating hurricanes that hammered that island. And so uh, they had a, a big upset. And the folks here in uh, the state of South Carolina, not so sure they like uh, what happened to the Gamecocks today. Oh, and I'm sure the Clemson Tigers were very aware of that. You always keep up with your rival as we see Dardis really getting it going now, going to the rim, using the left hand on the floater to finish over the top. With South Carolina going down earlier today, and right now Ohio giving Clemson everything that they want, especially on the offensive floor, end of the floor. Jordan Dardis getting into his bag. That would be the trick bag going to the left hand over the top. So the junior from Newark, Ohio, completes the three-point play. He's already got 14 points. Shelton Mitchell looks no worse for wear. I tell you what, when he came out of high school, I'll be completely honest with you. Shelton Mitchell couldn't shoot himself out of a <laughs> out of a gym by himself. I mean, to be honest, he could not shoot it. You can tell it's a testament to him how much work he's put into his game. He shot 45% from the field last year, which is the highest for a Clemson guard in the past 10 years. And you see him off to a great start, three for three today. More importantly, taking very good shots for his team, not forcing things, but making the right decisions as well. Second foul on Mitchell. So you're saying that uh, after he played three years of high school ball at Cuthbertson High and came to Oak Hill, he was like a lump of clay. You had a lot of work to do. I I'm going to go as far as to say I had nothing to do with that. Uh -huh. um, and the only reason I say that he has nothing to do with that because I did say he could not shoot. <laughs> but that young man put in the work, no question about it. The perfect floor general for Brad Brownell and the way that he wants for his team to be able to play. Can play well in the half court, but also push the tempo. We've seen him make great decisions in the open court so far. And now that he's making shots, this is one another one of the reasons why I feel like this Clemson team could be the sleeper in the ACC this year. Yeah, he missed time last year with a torn meniscus, had offseason surgery, and they say it's Still sore from time to time. Offensive foul goes against Clemson. Marquise Reed, the redshirt junior from Landover, Maryland, picks up his second personal. When you see Gavin Block getting there, getting outside of the restricted area and getting his body in place right in time. Great play by the veteran Block and getting over there and picking up the turnover of Clemson. You know, Block's coach, Saul Phillips, uses a great analogy when talking about block well one offensive foul at uh, the other end of the court leads to one at this end of the court and see now what just happened right there we see the we see the charge back to back ends of the floor and now it's Eli Thomas getting over and you see his feet outside of the restricted area but watch Shelton Mitchell come in and slip afterwards as we get another look at Thomas getting over getting his body squared away Shelton Mitchell coming over, running over to help his teammate up. It's a wet spot, guys. Stop running over to the wet spots and falling Ooh. on your own. Mm -hmm. You got some life lessons to work with these guys. You know what? I really do. I mean, maybe you should hold a seminar. <laughs> Reed kicks to the corner. After
after a pump fake, an air ball thrown up there by Scott Spencer. And Scott went wrong by hesitating. This guy will not hesitate. And, of course, Dardis would miss the wide open shot. Reed had it poked away from behind by Dardis. Loose ball. And it comes to the Bobcats. And Jordan Dardis doing it all, both ends of the floor. Finally misses a shot for Ohio, but goes right back down the floor when a great hustle play gets to get possession back for his team. James Gullen, redshirt sophomore from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And back to Dardis with under 10 on the shot clock. Final 90 seconds of the half, Dardis. Cross court to Laster. Nothing but net. And I'll tell you what, the folks from Athens, Ohio, are fired up that they've made the trip to Charleston. We'll take a 30-second break back to South Carolina in a moment. Talked about he needs to hunt shots. And since that point, he really has. And not only shooting the three, which he does extremely well, but also attacking off the dribble. And because of his aggressiveness, he's often been able to find teammates and get everyone else involved. But right here, you see him. With the beautiful finish with the left hand, and Jordan Dardis has gotten going only six points in their opener. Already 16 here in the first half. Yeah, he's well on his way to potentially a new career high. Last February, he dropped 26 at Eastern Michigan. Mitchell with a nice answer. Michelle Mitchell has been the answer for Clemson. He and Eli, uh, Eli Thomas have done a great job keeping Clemson a flow in this game. Mitchell on the defensive end and then coming up with two big jumpers over in the past few minutes. But Clemson has to find a way to slow down this shooting of Ohio. Gullen misfires. Long rebound snared by A.J. Oliver. Nice job defensively by Gullen to cut off the baseline. Here's Grantham. A little strong. There's Thomas again. Dardis comes away with it. Shot clock off. Final 15 seconds of the half. Timeout called with 9.4 on the clock. Right now, I believe Saul Phillips is a great timeout, really, and more, and more importantly, to get the personnel that he wants on the floor. And to try to find a way to get the ball in the hands of Jordan Dardis, who has gotten hot here in the first half. And more importantly, not necessarily just for Dardis to be able to score, but to find an, often find an opportunity for Laster as well. Laster has had a very good first half as well as block. So the veterans for Ohio have played well. They've struggled with their freshmen early, but they found themselves in a good position by their veteran group. Even without potentially their best player, Jason Carter, sideline for this week. Well, it's a rivalry that dates back to 1929, Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, number 11 USC, hosting UCLA at the Coliseum. Who you got, Josh Rosen or Sam Darnold? You know what? I'm going with Rosen on this one. I'm thinking UCLA is going to have the big upset on mm -hmm. the road at USC. You know, I'm a college football guy, mm -hmm. as we've already noted. I don't really think that USC <laughs> has gotten it done this year. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a believer in USC right now. I think UCLA comes up with a big upset on the road. All right. What do you think here for the Bobcats? What are we looking at on this final possession? Um, I would say get the ball to Dardis. That, number that, number 35 in white. Now, and I like 24. I like 24 in white. I like last year. Well, both those guys have been able to do in the first half. One of those two should make sure they get their hands on the basketball in these last six seconds. Kirk, three seconds. Running out of time. Down under one second. And they didn't get the shot off. And that's why 24 or 35 would have had the ball in their hands in comparison to me with eight, a little over eight seconds. It's not a lot of time to run anything. you got to get the ball in the hands of those guys. Well, we wondered off the top, could the Ohio defense slow down the Clemson offense? Well, Dante Grantham and the Tigers have 42 on the board. 42-38, halftime here in Charleston. Now we send you to the studio. We've got ourselves a ball game. Welcome back, everybody, along with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. 
Both these teams shot the lights out in that first half, combining for about 57% from the floor. Well, Clemson was able to get the job done in the paint, 24 points in the paint. Going to Eli Thomas a lot, he was able to produce for them. But on the other end of the floor, Ohio has been a very good three-point shooting team for their last two seasons. Their second and third best seasons overall shooting the three. And then they were able to get it done in the first half. Gavin Block knocking down the three. Mike Laster finding himself in a beautiful position to knock down the three. But Jordan Dardis was the guy that got it going for the Bobcats in the first half. And he was able to get started off beyond the arc. Knocking down two three-pointers of his own in the first half, but he scored in many other ways. And that's what Saul Phillips needed his team to do was get it going for Dardis, who they felt would be their leading scorer coming into the season. And Corey now for tonight's game track brought to you by Gildan. So you say Dardis should shoot some more. I do. I think he should, should, should get a few more <laughs> shots. I think Dante Grantham should get a few more shots. But Shelton Mitchell played a beautiful point guard game for the Clemson Tigers in the first half. Now we'll see if he can continue that type of effort for 40 minutes. And if the Bobcats can clean it up a little bit more, 11 turnovers in that first half, there's no reason they can't hang and perhaps pick off Clemson in this game. Well, Clemson got 13 of their points off those turnovers, so that was a big part of their offense as well. If Ohio cleans that up and doesn't give Clemson and those opportunities, then it makes it much easier for them to guard him in the half court. Tavion Kirk, the freshman point guard from Joliet West High School in Illinois, in control of the basketball for the Bobcats. Tough challenge three, good closeout, and Laster shot an air ball. Dante Grantham had it poked away. Clemson keeps it. Clemson picked 13th in the ACC preseason poll. There's one of their two seniors, DeVoe, misfiring, but Thomas continues to get it done on the glass. He not only picks up an offensive rebound, but he also gets an assist. But what you're seeing is almost like a coming out party for Eli Thomas, and a great decision there not to force a shot, but to find Gabe DeVoe and get his senior a good look opportunity. And more importantly, DeVoe's the one of their best defenders. When you get a guy like him making shots, he really locks in on the defensive end of the floor. Now, Thomas was rated number 31 in his class in the ESPN 100 in 2015. Picked Texas A&M originally. Block misfires, and there's another rebound for Thomas. That young man has skills. Oh, he's got a lot of skills, no question about it. We mentioned during the first half where he lost 17 pounds of fat and put on some muscle over the summer, got his body prepared for him to be able to go out and play 30-plus minutes in the ACC. Grantham tried to dunk it, and they're going to say he was fouled. Well, the tough part about that was the fall. And when you've got to play three games in four days, this is one of those things where, you know, Dante Grantham, he's going to feel this one. You see him going up for the dunk, unable to get above the rim. But more importantly, you see the fall coming down on that left side. And there's no bracing yourself from that fall. You're absorbing all of that. At 21, 22 years old, you recover from it, but you see it from his facial expression. <laughs> that was a pretty tough hit. I can't even imagine falling from that type of height right now. Oh, no, you break a hip now. <laughs> as old as we are. <laughs> <laughs> a young man out of Hargrave Military Academy, averaging 15 and a half per game through the first two. He's got a dozen here tonight. Yeah, he was in double figures in the first half, and one of the things that you'll see from Clemson today, they've had two... You know, pretty convincing wins early in the season, but Brad Brownell's his rotation may be cut a little short as Gavin Block knocks down another three. But his rotation may be cut a bit shorter today because I believe Ohio is here to play. They're going to stick around to the end of this one if Clemson's able to even come up with the win. But if Ohio continues to shoot the ball this well, they could be the ones moving on. Thomas finds the cutter, and there's the dunk. There was no stopping him that time. Taylor got dunked upon. And there's Grantham showing more of that ability to attack the rim. A beautiful feed from Thomas once again. But Dante Grantham, not just a three-point shooter anymore, giving you more for the Clemson Tigers. Block, drive, and dish. Good patience shown around the block, but then the shot misfired by Taylor. This is Shelton Mitchell with the basketball in the backcourt with Marquise Reed. Clemson looking to improve to 3-0 and on the year and secure a spot in tomorrow night's second semifinal here in Charleston. Reed off the mark with the triple. 
Dardis had some room, turned it down the first time, and then put up a brick. Here comes Clemson, up eight. No look, Mitchell. Thomas with the hammer. Beautiful feed from Shelton Mitchell. I told you about his shooting woes early, but one thing that's never been a problem with Shelton Mitchell is his passing ability. He's always been great finding his teammates, and that was just a small example of what he's able to do in the open court. Ball poked away. Bobcat still with it. Kirk had his shot blocked. Here comes Clemson with numbers. Good hesitation by Reed, but then he was denied. The trailer able to lay it in. Dante Grantham heating up. A great effort by Grantham, and you see the Clemson Tigers showing a bit of emotion here in Charleston, trying to make it like Little John at the College of Charleston. And they've been able to do it with for huge savings on all things winter. Back in the beautiful city of Charleston, South Carolina on a Thursday evening. The Tigers on a big run to start the second half. The 11-3 run to open up the largest lead of the night. Well, the good thing for Ohio, they're protecting the basketball better. They don't have any turnovers in the second half, but the problem is they've only made one shot, one out of six from the field, a three-pointer by Gavin Block, and Clemson has been great on the offensive end so far, already shooting four for eight early, including attacking the paint, two dunks. One so, for Thomas and one for Grantham. And early Thomas, in the excuse me, uh, Thomas is up to 13 points. That's just two off his career high at Duke last year. And he's already got a double-double for the Tigers. Good defense by Clemson. Tough shot by Kirk, way off the mark. It's Clemson basketball. Well, in the first half, Clemson... Shot 59%. They're still hitting the shots. Ohio's cooled off dramatically, though. Rebounds a double-double for him. So the Clemson front line has imposed their will upon the Bobcats here this afternoon. And at the other end of the floor, Clemson this year seem to be more willing defenders. And they've clamped down a little bit here in the second half. The Bobcats are only one of four from beyond the arc here in the second half. And we've talked about Clemson really getting off the slow start so far this season and then really turning it on at the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half. And we've seen just that here today where they've come out of the locker room in the second stanza with a tremendous amount of energy. Kirk into traffic. Nice help by Thomas to avoid the foul. Kirk gets screen. Reed left alone. And he can't make him pay. There's an over-the-back foul called against Amir Sims, the freshman from Palmyra, Virginia. And this is a danger zone for Ohio right now. And Saul Phillips goes with Zach Butler at the point guard position and takes out Tavion Kirk. But, then, you know, when you have two freshman point guards, there's often going to be, you know, it's going to be difficult really to sustain runs, especially against the opposing team, because these are guys who are only playing with their second ever real game. Mm -hmm. And so this is tough having to take on this Clemson team that starts a veteran lineup. You're talking about a bunch of upperclassmen in the starting lineup for the Tigers playing against a number of young guys for Ohio. And really that experience has shown here to start this second half. And I tell you, I like something that Coach Phillips did with his two freshman point guards. He wound up rooming them together so as not to have a, a potential for divides, two guys fighting over playing time. He wanted them to be bonded and to work together. And by all accounts, that has been the case. Couldn't have been me. We'd have been fighting in the room <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> That's the reality behind it. I mean, at the end of the day, playing time is important. Mm -hmm. When it comes to minutes, like I said, you know, I, everyone who was my backup point guard at Virginia, we're great friends today, but we didn't necessarily always get along on the court. So you were not fostering the youngsters in Charlottesville. I wasn't there to sit on the bench. <laughs> now, how were you treated when you got there? You guys won your freshman year, the NIT, and you had a couple of guards ahead of you who were very accomplished. No, 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 no. I didn't have guards ahead of me in my position. I have Brian, I have Brian Stiff, and I had Anthony Oliver, who is the father of A.J. Oliver playing for Clemson, but those guys were like big brothers to me, and they needed for me to be successful. Oh, I so see. I was the point guard. I had to give them the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so they took great care of me. All right. I got you. 
Mickle. Nice little jump hook. Ohio had missed its last six shots. Bobcats back within 10. And this is where you'll see if Clemson really is a veteran team or not, if they can handle prosperity and really put this game away because they have found what works for them against Ohio, which is finishing in the paint, getting the ball inside to Eli Thomas and taking advantage of their size in comparison to do they play and more so of an I want to get mine type of style now and everybody starts to try to score points in comparison to doing what's best for the team. And this is where we'll learn a lot about Clemson. Dangerous pass. Grantham able to grab it. Here's Gabe DeVoe, the third. Thomas sets a screen, rolls to the bucket. They can't find him. Now they do with the extra pass. And he will head to the free throw line. And as you see that action by Clemson, Dante Grantham turned down a wide open three pointer. Now, I've mentioned before, this is a guy who is shooting 80% from the field coming into this game and having another great shooting night. But he turns down a look at a three to get the ball inside to Elijah Thomas, and it goes right back to the point as we talked about before. Does Clemson continue to exploit the mismatch to have on the interior by getting the ball inside? Or do the, does everyone just start going for theirs and trying to get up shots? And a beautiful play by Grantham there. Now it's important for Eli Thomas now to pay it off at the free throw line and come up with points at the line. Corey, as we talked in the first half, you are somebody who thinks this Clemson team was underranked in the preseason poll at 13 in the ACC. You still see a lot of good things out here. I really do. And the reason I say that is because of the depth that they have. When you talk about having a post presence like, Tom, like Thomas, but you also come off the bench with a graduate transfer like Donnell. You have a, you know, a freshman sensation in Amir Sims who can be a really, really good college player. And then you have a veteran lineup, Shelton Mitchell, who could be one of the best point guards in the league. Marquise Reed, Gabe DeVoe. There are a lot of pieces, and I didn't even mention Dante Grantham in that mix. There are a lot of pieces on this Clemson team. Now, one big factor, and we've talked about it, last year, Brad Brownell, for the first time as Clemson head coach, had a team that finished outside the top 65 nationally in defensive efficiency. They weren't very efficient in the first half here tonight. Much better so far here in the second half. And I, I don't think that yet they're back to being a Brad Brownell style of defensive team. But it's hard to do that when you have such a good offense. And that, that is really the mix that they're going to have to find is where they know that they have to lock down in the half court, especially when they get to ACC play. Because there are no easy games in the ACC right mm -hmm. now. By the way, Grantham just picked up his third personal foul. And so he's on the bench for Clemson for now. Mark Donnell back in there. Five to shoot. Mickle rises up. Mitchell working on Butler. Finds Sims. Here's DeVoe. And they'll reset with Shelton Mitchell, the redshirt junior. Vanderbilt transfer in traffic, and he will head to the free throw line. And that is a patient and a very smart offensive possession for Clemson. There are so many times where they could have just fired up a shot, but yet they actually play and milk their shot clock down to six seconds, and more importantly, Shelton Mitchell attacking the basket with the opportunity to score on his own or find one of his teammates, and it makes it, up, it, makes it a positive in getting to the free throw line. Third foul on Doug Taylor. And so Shelton Mitchell, who actually originally committed to Wake Forest until Jeff Bizdelic was fired, went to Vandy for a year, been at Clemson since. He hits the first. Mentioned him going to Vandy. He actually committed to Wake Forest. And when Danny Manning got the job, got out of his commitment, as you see my boy A.J. Oliver coming into the game. And when you say your boy, you mean your boy. I mean my boy. I mean, again, his mom is probably talking bad about me right now. His mother, Audra, is the head women's basketball coach at Clemson. 
And his dad's like a big brother to me. Audra's like a big sister, but she's kind of like that mean big sister, though. She's not like the <laughs> nice big sister in any way. Have you gotten any mean text messages during the game yet? I'm not going to look at my phone. <laughs> After the UVA football comment, I'm scared to look at it. <laughs> Now, A.J. Oliver listed as 6'5", 190, a redshirt freshman from Seneca, South Carolina, but uh, he spent several years growing up living in Birmingham while his mom was the head coach at UAB. DeVoe got ahead of speed but missed the layup. Ohio only four of its last 18. Block. Misfires again. And this is one area of a concern for Clemson when you look at it. Right now, when they when Shelton Mitchell comes out of the game, who is their backup point guard? And I asked yesterday, in all honesty, and I didn't ask Brad Brownell, but everyone else said they would probably tell you that they don't know right now. At this point, I would guess it would be Gabe DeVoe running it right now. But we've seen Clyde Trapp play the position who hasn't played in this game. Because DeVoe gets the offensive foul. Official timeout here in Charleston. Clemson up 13 over Ohio. On ESPNU with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman, and we've seen separation here in the second half, in part because Ohio has cooled off dramatically shooting the basketball. But at 13 points, it's not out of range, especially when you've got a guy like this and Jordan Dardis who can make threes at the clip that he can. And now 0 for 2 in the second half, and that almost seemed like a rush shot, not one that his teammates created for him, but they've got to get back to getting him looks at the rim. And I'll tell you what. As Laster takes the long rebound, going one-on-two, and he puts it in. And Mike Laster has had an impressive game. When you think about what he's been able to do, we're talking about a senior who has been through a lot at Ohio, and, and Brad Brownell doesn't like what his team has come out to out the timeout, so he wants to call one and make sure he gets them back on the right pace. Because as we mentioned before, 13 points now down to 11. That's not a lot of breathing room. And we've seen Clemson in situations before in this game where they could pull away and Ohio was able to fight back. Well, there's what you're talking about. This uh, Bobcats team can really fill it up. So if they heat up like they did in the first half, there's no reason they can't chip away and make this a ball game once again. And when you look at these two years, the last two years under Saul Phillips, this is their second and third best years in Ohio Bobcats history of basketball but shooting the three-pointers. So it is something that is important to his style of play. And we'll have to see if they can come up with a number of those threes here late in the second half. Now, we talked off the top about uh, the history of Saul Phillips as a coach. A true Bo Ryan protege. He was a uh, captain as a player back in 1995 when Wisconsin Platteville won the Division III National Championship. And he did that under Coach Ryan. And, of course, Bo Ryan used that success to move on to the Division I level and had a couple of stops along the way. Saul Phillips was his right-hand man. And... He's done a nice job as well since becoming a head coach himself now in year four in Athens, Ohio. And a turnover for Clemson. And they didn't necessarily handle the ball great in the first half. You know, and you talk about Bo Ryan, and we see his son, Will, as a member of the staff of the Ohio Bobcats. So, of course, Coach Phillips paying it forward. You know, Bo Ryan gave him a shot. He gives Will a shot. That's the way it's supposed to be in the game of basketball. Absolutely. Kirk rises up for the rebound. You know, Tavion Kirk is listed at 6'3", but he's a lot longer than that. We saw that length on the weak side for the offensive board. And there's a pretty strong following for the Ohio Bobcats. They brought some fans along with them here to Charleston, and right now they're looking for something to get excited about. They got excited about the offensive rebound by Kirk, and now him, Kirk is showing off his offensive ability and his athleticism unable to finish there, but posting up the point guard. I like it. That's not something you see often in college basketball. I like it. He had Reed pinned and... Did the hard part, couldn't finish the easy part. Right now, Brad Brown now trusting two of his freshmen on the floor. A.J. Oliver unable to finish. But Eli Thomas continuing to be a presence on the boards. And has a size advantage underneath and really forcing Ohio to foul him. Otherwise, that would have been another opportunity for second chance points for Thomas. Second foul on Kevin Mickle, the Brooklyn, New York native. Played his high school ball at St. Benedict's in New Jersey. 
You know, mentioned uh, all the Bobcats fans in the building. I think half the state of Ohio is here in Charleston because the Dayton Flyers travel very well. They're talking about at least a thousand Dayton Flyers fans in the building for the second part of our nighttime doubleheader. And and one thing about Dayton, we both know when you follow college basketball, you know the Dayton Flyers, they'd like to come in and take over arenas. We get we get opportunity to see a couple Flyer fans right there. They come in and take over. They have been in places where they go on true road games mm -hmm. and know that they have a decided advantage as far as their fans coming in to watch them. That's, that's a great thing to have for a college basketball program. Yeah, they uh, have hosted more NCAA tournament games in Dayton than any other building in the country, and most of those games have been neutral site games. Of course, the first four games are played every year in Dayton, and they sell out the place every single time. I'm going off the off the cuff here. I'm thinking it's 117 games, 34 more than any other site. I believe those are the numbers for Dayton. So, and again, when, you know, we'll have a chance to talk more about them in our next game, but, you know, and they're doing some renovations in the arena to make sure that uh, they keep getting those games. Block just keeps firing away, and he cannot find the mark. Bobcats now five for their last 24 from the floor. Clemson getting a little sloppy right now. We talked about them being able to handle prosperity. They still have the 13-point lead, but their offense has not operated as crisply as it was early in the game, especially once Brad Brownell made the substitutions. Amir Sims now coming out and grant them back into the game. Brad Brownell doesn't want to take any chances in giving Ohio an opportunity to get back into this one because he knows how dangerous they can be from beyond the arc. Yeah. Ohio has a total of seven points in the first 11 and a half minutes of the second half. Thomas spins, and Taylor fouled him before the shot. Fourth foul on Taylor, the junior from Columbus. And having a post presence in basketball is like having a running game in football. When you know you can throw the ball inside, and more often than not, you're going to come away with positive plays, whether it's a finish or getting to the free throw line. That is such a huge advantage, and that's what the Clemson Tigers have in Eli Thomas, who's done the job this year, losing 17 pounds in the offseason, getting his body in shape and preparing himself to be able to play heavy minutes. And you see it's paid off for Brad Brown out here this evening. 15 points now, 13 rebounds, and really has passed the ball extremely well out of the post when he's gotten double teamed. So... A tremendous pickup as far as the transfer from Texas A&M for Brad Brownell's group. And I'll tell you what, if he knocks down this free throw, it'll be a new career high for Eli Thomas. He went for 15 at Cameron Indoor last February. He's got 16 and counting here tonight in Charleston. And most importantly, he stayed out of foul trouble and been, and been able to stay on the court with his teammates. Kirk. Nice job under control and close. And you see why Kirk actually led Ohio in scoring in their first game out against Alabama AM. And you know, the four point guard to not shoot a three pointer and still score 16 points and being lead, that's pretty impressive for a freshman because he's a guy that's not going to settle for shots. He is trying to attack the rim any opportunity he has. Well, his coach calls him a pit bull. That's why he's given him the basketball. Reed. Hits the three and then an official timeout because of an injury over in the corner. And Jordan Dardis maybe is holding that. That's not good. I'm not going to speculate on what it could be, but at the same time, when you see your star player coming down and unable to walk up to the sideline, that is concern for Saul Phillips. We'll take a break while they check out Jordan Dardis here in Charleston. A little receiving attention from the training staff at Ohio University. Good to see a smile on his face. Yeah, it's nothing too serious when you're smiling. That's that's the good thing. He's not coming back into the game right now, but he does have the big smile, so that normally is a sign that it's nothing too serious. Kirk off the switch. Finds his backcourt mate, Gullen, who hits the three. Richard, sophomore from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, makes it 63-50 Clemson. And that's the recipe for a comeback right there for Ohio. You're going to need more of those threes, but you're going to have to find a way to stop Clemson from scoring in the paint.
Well, tip off your weekend with another NBA doubleheader on ESPN. OKC with their trio of stars, Russ, Carmelo, PG-13, in the first at 8 p.m. Eastern against the Spurs. And then how about the start of the season? Boogie Cousins is enjoying. It's historic some of the things he's doing right now. When your name is mentioned with Shaq and Moses Malone as the only two people that have done what you've done is now another three for Ohio. I believe Block was the one knocking that down. But yeah, that Boogie Cousins is in that type of company right now. The, over 15 games, he, Shaq, and Mose Malone are the only players who have ever had 400 points and 200 rebounds in that short span of time. In and out on Grantham. Yeah, I think John Calipari enjoys himself watching some Pelicans basketball these days. I believe so. How about the pass? There you go. Nice pass by Kurt. Mickle finishes it off. And right just like that, it's a 10-point game. Again, when you're talking about a team that can shoot the ball the way Ohio can, you're never too far away. And Brad Brownell recognizes that, does not like what he sees right now, especially on the defensive end from his team. Clemson down to one timeout remaining, lead down to 10. Tavion Kirk not necessarily getting opportunity to score as much, but right there, the beautiful feed to Mickle. Put a little hot sauce on that one right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so hot he had to pull his hand off of it when he <laughs> dropped a pass. That's what I'm talking about, young fella. I love it. Tavion Kirk out of Joliet West High School. Well, this is a special week here in Charleston for Brad Brownell, who last night celebrated his 49th birthday in style with the boys. And Amir Sims chasing him around the table. <laughs> I tell you what, when you look at things like this is what college basketball is about. You talk about grown men mentoring and grooming young men, and this is a group that loves his coach. This is not made up. This was not something that they did for the camera, and that's the type of stuff you love to see. Brad Brownell, he really has the ear of this team, and this is a group that enjoys playing for this man. You know, I've heard Coach Krzyzewski mention on more than one occasion what a blessing it is for him as a 70-year-old to still be around young men 18 to 22 and how it helps to keep him young and fresh. I, I tell you what, and I've been around him a lot and had opportunity to talk to him a couple weeks ago, and Coach K looks good, he, he, and he looks refreshed. And let me tell you who else looks good. His team. Oh, Grayson yeah. Allen, 37 points. Mm against Michigan State on Tuesday night, and that's without Bagley, who, in my opinion, is the number one pick in the draft this year. He should be. They, um, Duke looks pretty good. So if you're Coach K, you should feel happy. You, you should. should You should feel pretty rejuvenated right now. So it sounds like you would handicap Duke as the number one team, the favorite at this point, late November, to be making it to San Antonio and cutting down the nets. I didn't say that. All right. You won't go that far. <laughs> no, I, th I think they have a chance to do it. Um, you know, when you look at them, they, they have a special group, I think, with Trayvon Duvall playing the way that he is and Grayson. But when you have a guy like Bagley that attracts so much attention, you know, it's, you know, and, and also we could not mention Duke right now without, of course, me offering my sincerest condolences to, you know, who are my family as well, but the Capel family, Jeff, Jason, of course, Mrs. Capel, and the loss of Jeff Capel Jr., who has had his imprint on so much of not only basketball but the lives of young men along this east coast and um you know sorry to see coach cape go but at the same time like say he's a man his life will be celebrated foul called on kirk his third and at the free throw line dante grantham well this clemson team Took a summertime trip to Barcelona, Spain for basketball, and it turned out to be so much more because of the terrorist attack, the van that wound up uh, killing 13 people just outside of the Clemson Hotel, and Grantham was one of two Tigers who were on the sidewalk just seconds before that occurred. You know, when you, when you have an opportunity to experience things like that, it really gives you an appreciation for this country we live in. And I know our, our country has problems, but I'll be the first person to tell you, I've lived outside of the United States before. There's no place like America. And, and honestly, I really don't like leaving that much anymore. So therefore, I like it here. And so does Gavin Block. As he's able to knock down another three. 
to keep Ohio within striking distance and now the lead is actually single digits a nine point game. Block has three threes here in the second half a total of four for the game. Foul at the other end. Goes against Mickle and that is number four. On the graduate transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. Sheldon Mitchell making the right play, not settling, attacking the rim. Mickle unable to get over and get set before Mitchell is airborne, which means it's going to be a blocking foul. Well, Corey, we've now got three players with four fouls each. Mickle and Taylor for Ohio. DeVoe has four fouls for Clemson. Shelton Mitchell, the 6'3 southpaw, gets a pair from the line. And the lead stretches back to 11. And this is where, if you're Clemson, and more importantly, a Clemson fan, you need to see your team lock in defensively. You know Ohio wants to be able to shoot the three-pointer, so you have to find a way to take it away from them. Jordan Dart is making the smart play. They know he wants to shoot the three, so does a great job putting the ball on the floor, getting to the rim, unable to finish the shot, but yet has a chance to put two points on the board at the free throw line. And you can now add Mitchell to that growing list of players with four fouls. Now, that's big because when you talk about Shelton Mitchell, and if you take him out, they're going to put Gabe DeVoe in the game. I don't know if he's coming in for Mitchell or not. But with 442, the one guy that you can not afford to lose, especially with, the, you know, you've got a lead, but it's not within, you know, it's, it's they're still within striking distance. And Brad Brunell recognizes that. And he's going to make sure that he protects these two guys. Now, he's got... DeVoe coming back in, he's going to take out A.J. Oliver. But Shelton Mitchell has to play very smart here, especially on the defensive end of the floor, because he can't afford to be on the sideline. There is not a backup point guard on this Clemson Tiger team. Those are the first two free throws of the second half of the Bobcats. Dardis leads everybody now with 18 points. But those are his first two of the second half, right? He has 16 in the first half, and that, it's amazing that they're still within striking distance without him really being effective here in the second half. After slipping the screen, Grantham sets up Mitchell from the wing. Here come the Bobcats, down nine. And this is where Kirk needs to be aggressive, trying to attack the rim and make a play for himself or his teammate. Well, give him an assist off the beautiful three by Block, who just keeps knocking him down. And how about Gavin Block and what he's been able to do? We talked about the veteran presence of Dardis, of Laster, and Block. And Block has shown up huge here in the second half. Well, Saul Phillips describes Gavin Block as like the rug from the movie The Big Lebowski. He says Gavin makes the whole room come together. He's making things come together like the big Lebowski here in the second half. Well, he made his fifth three-pointer here to get this even closer for the Ohio Bobcats. So Looking forward to seeing how Chris Clark reintegrates back with Virginia Tech. We've got the Hokies coming up next on ESPN2. He will be a difference maker for Coach Buzz Williams. Gavin Block, boy, he has found the range here in the second half down the stretch. And we've been talking about Ohio and their ability to shoot the three. Block four for eight in the second half from beyond the arc. And he really has been the offense. Dart is unable to get on track. But Block has picked up the slack for his teammate. And right now, Ohio seems to feel like they've got a little bit of momentum going right now. Clemson only eight of its last 22. The free throw line has helped them, you know, maintain a lead here in the second half. But Ohio continues to cut into it. A couple of free throws by Marquise Reed out of Capital Christian Academy. In the D.C. area, he lists Landover as his hometown. Absorbing the contact from the big fella. No problem for number four, Tavion Kirk. And how about the confidence from the freshman? Did not have a great first half, but he's come back in the second half and really done a great job attacking the basket. More importantly, he knows that Gabe DeVoe and Shelton Mitchell both have four fouls. He's going to continue to put the pressure on him. There's Gabe DeVoe. Terrific stop and pop. That's a senior play there. That's what you need for your seniors to do. Come up and make big plays for you when your team's need it. Corner three a little strong, and there's your senior DeVoe tracking down the rebound. Now 
Clemson happy to work a little clock, take their time bringing it up. Thomas sets the screen. Eight to shoot. That's a two-point shot by Mitchell. And a foul on the rebound goes against Ohio. And there's another one of those opportunities. Eli Thomas creating for his teammates just by being effective at pursuing offensive rebound. And so Doug Taylor has fouled out of the ball game. Saul Phillips spent seven years as head coach at North Dakota State, took the Bison twice to the NCAAs, including up at setting uh, Oklahoma, the NCAA tournament in 2014, now in year four at Ohio. That's how I know you're a real pro. You didn't say Bison. You said Bison. bison. See? That only happens from real pros. You guys in Syracuse that. might learn a thing or two every now and then. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's the, last, that. that's the last Syracuse compliment you're getting, by the way. I'm going to go fishing the rest of the week. You, <laughs> you're sitting next to me for a while here, buddy. At the line, Elijah Thomas already with a career high in points with another double-double. He's been impressive here. And oftentimes when you're playing, and Clemson is a man-to-man -man team, when you're playing against a smaller group, the bigs can't stay on the floor. But Elijah Thomas has done a great job. Clemson has guys in foul trouble, but it's not Elijah Thomas. And this is a first, really, for Brad Brundell, being able to have to play him in a meaningful game this many minutes. And now you see the Tigers going zone, trying to protect those guards up top. Well, Mitchell did a nice job of identifying where Block was to make that three-point shot a tough one. How about the youngster, Kirk, once again? Ooh, that was pretty. That's what they like to call a jelly now. See, it used to be a finger roll. Now it's jelly. It's mm. got to be a jelly roll. All right. A beautiful one. Right there from Tavion Kirk. Young man has a little bit of game. It's a seven point game. Let's see how Clemson responds. Got a good shot, couldn't finish. Dardis with the rebound. Blocked to the trailer. It's Dardis. Puts it on the deck. Tough runner. Big fight for the ball. Gabe Bow went down grabbing that, that right leg, but here you see this is what you call Ooh. jelly. That is not even a finger roll. That is a <laughs> jelly roll by Tavion Kirk. Beautiful to finish. I won't even say over the big fella. Wow. Under the big fella. That is something. Young man who originally committed to Drake, but then after a coaching change, and then the transfer from Ohio, by Jerron Simmons to Michigan opened up the spot and the Bobcats sure are glad to have it. That was a big miss there. You got Jordan Dardis, your best shooter with a wide open look from three. He knocks that down. It becomes a four point game. Clemson dodged one on that possession. Marquise Reed, the Robert Morris transfer to the bucket. Well, you know, he scored 529 points as a freshman. Brandy Tool with the Robert Morris Colonials. He can fill it up. Grantham after it. It comes to block. He's got two more. Good time out there by Saul Phillips setting up his defense. And if I'm Coach Phillips right now, I'm sure that they've worked on some type of full-court pressure, normally a zone pressure, to get a trap going. And this is the time to bring it out to see if you can get a turnover from Clemson in the backcourt. But Brad Brownell probably drawing up his press offense right now, thinking the exact same thing coming out of the timeout. Well, tonight on ESPN, you won't want to miss the next edition of Sports Center with Scott Van Pell. He'll have his take on how much uh, a win tonight changes Super Bowl expectations both in Pittsburgh and in Tennessee. Plus the Celtics go for a 14th win in a row against the defending champs. So look at what the streak has meant for Boston's title hopes. And how about the newly minted National League MVP, John Carlos Stanton of the Marlins, Jose Altuve, the shortest 
MVP in baseball history, got it in the American League, five foot five. We'll be talking all about that. SVP at midnight on ESPN and the ESPN app. Altuve, smaller stature, big in game. He was huge in the World Series for the Astros, and really all year long, of course, MVP. And how about the talk of Giancarlo Stanton being traded? You win the MVP, and they're talking about trading you? It's only happened twice before in Major League history. He could be number three. Well, I tell you what, when I saw his contract, whew, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Derek Jeter is not looking to pay that salary. And right now, Ohio going to play this possession out. Shot clock already down to 10 seconds. Too late to foul. They need a stop. DeVoe for three. Around and out. Ohio's got it back down seven. They need a quick bucket here and a timeout from Saul Phillips. And that's the guy to have the ball in his hands. Block off the bounce. He's got three more. Saul Phillips tried to get the timeout, but of course, the players have to call it once it's a live basketball. Good foul there by Dart is getting up. Coach Phillips tried to get this get the timeout, but of course Clemson did a very good job of getting the ball out of bounds and throwing it in. And once it's a live basketball, coaches are not allowed to call the timeout. Foul number three on Dartis. Grantham at the line. He's perfect four for four so far tonight. Clemson is a very good free throw shooting team coming in shooting over 70% as a team and that is a luxury to have when you know that you can depend on your guys to go to the free throw line and close out games. I like Coach Phillips not calling a timeout here saving it for if his team is able to score. Kirk spinning. Nice job again by Eli Thomas to not commit the foul, but then the basketball given back. And now you go with the timeout because you don't have the ball in the full court, so you take it and drop exactly what you want to do.